this is almost a surreal experience for me because I, I, you know, it's like waking up and finding out that all these people in this country had all of these experiences. And wherever you're going with this story, I have no idea. Uh I I have no concept for what's about to happen next. (laughs) Where we end up. Yeah. So what, what, uh, sadly, what what then happened was in in September 1997, the war veterans who in, who were involved in Zanland Zipra against uh, the Rhodesians, they wanted their pensions because they were still waiting for their pensions from 1980, and this sadly is where is now where the country falls apart. So the the decision by the by the Zimbabwean government was then well we'll just print more money. Oh, okay. so they printed more money. To be able to pay the pensions. To pay, to pay the, vent, the, the veterans' pensions. And was it a lot? Were there a lot of it was veterans? 20, 20 billion. It was 20 billion redemption dollars. That's Zimbabwe. how far behind they were on their liabilities. Mm. And so they said, we'll just print it. Print the money and pay them. Whoa. Okay, so you saw an immediate devaluation of the of the Zimbabwean dollar. The moment they announced it? Or, or how, how quickly does this shock through, well, run through the system? Well, lit- literally, literally the, the next day, it certainly, there was a devaluation of the, of the Zimbabwean dollar. They must have known that, right? Didn't everybody know that? No, well, c- certainly, certainly we didn't. We, I, I remember I was doing some work in the Victoria Falls at the time, and uh, it, we suddenly got this news, and uh, your dollar had gone from your rede- Zimbabwean dollar had gone from four to one to eight to one in one night. Whoa! Mm. You know, so this this trend continued. So every every time there was something to pay, it was a case of print more money, print more money, print more money. I was about to say when you were talking earlier that that when you had gone to four to one, and your currency to the U.S. dollar, that during wartime it must have been incredibly tempting to have printed a whole bunch of the even the even currency. For, even for the lo- for the local market, right? And and they and they ended up ho- having some level of restraint, absolutely. And then to give in to that temptation, mm-hmm. we see. But you see, com- completely different players. So the the players the players that were in place during the war, and I'm talking about the government players, were completely different people to the, the people that the, that were in power, that were came into government from 1980. So all of all of those positions, even though even though you might have had the old minister or deputy minister or secretary in place for a, a short period after independence, they would all have been working their way out. So do you, by, re- do by, you remember where you were when you heard that your currency had been devalued? Is it, was it that pivotal of a moment? Well, that that first that first um, that first devaluation, I know exactly where I was. I was at, Maca- at the Macarthur Sun in Victoria Falls. What were you, how, you listened to it on the radio or how yeah. did you hear about it? I heard it on the radio. Because I, as I'm thinking about you describing that, that would be finding out your net worth and your future earning potential had just been cut in half. Uh, but it didn't stop there. So by the end of the year, it was 32 to 1. Oh, God. Hmm. Over, over the next 10 years, over the next 10 years of, of this scenario carrying on, it got to a stage at the beginning of at the, when it finally crashed, where where the, the exchange rate was one quintillion to one. So that's one with twelve noughts behind it, to one U.S. dollar. How, how did anyone survive? You couldn't buy anything. Virtually, you couldn't. My my salary then I was in a in a group group operation group group operations director's position for three five star hotels. My salary was worth two hundred US dollars a month. Oh my God! Mm. And that was in in that position, which should have been, you know, it should have been considerably more than yeah, that. thousands. But, yeah. uh, but that's what it was. And I'd have to the B- BBC. BBC launched a released a figure the other day, a little while ago, when when they were talking about the, the height that they were comparing Monagagwa's rule and Mugabe's rule. Monagagwa is, is a current president. Um, and they were saying it at the highest of this before the crash, inflation was running at over one billion percent a month. A month. That's what that's what it was. You'd never catch up with that. It's, it's got, once one month of that is impossible. it's over. Yeah, impossible. So then the, the Zimbabwean dollar crashed, and they then adopted the U.S. dollar as in in two thousand and eight. They adopted the U.S. dollar as as the currency. And that was basically in, used used as a currency for the next decade. Did that mean that basically everyone said we're starting over? Correct. I mean, because you would have no savings, your banks no. would have well, no banks. Banks were leveled anyway. Yeah, they any, couldn't. Any they couldn't the have been trading was, anything. Was zero anyway. Were there banks there at all? Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, still doing their best to, to work with what they had to work with, um, which was incredibly difficult because you can imagine any foreign currency com- coming into the country was being hoarded because there was the only way to retain some value in what you had was by having US dollars or, what, or what, pounds. How or, do you go to the, because this would have been the time of credit cards, how do you go into the grocery store? How are you have, buying wouldn't things? Have, in, 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 in my life, until the time I moved to South Africa, there was no such thing as a credit card. You couldn't get it. You couldn't get a credit card. You couldn't work with the bank's money. So if you went you to a, the store, you could have to a debit get, card. Okay. But but never a credit card. Okay. So you could have a debit debit card, but um, you would use your debit card. But as as things accelerated, so they became more and more worthless. So it became worth, worth not worth having. You how, still had how, them. how do you buy groceries in a in a billion? Percent inflation. Well, you remember you, world. you have you have a banknote that's also a quintillion or a quintillion dollar banknote. <laughs> so you, you carry them around in a box or in a rucksack or in a wheelbarrow and something. Genuinely, mm-hmm. like you're not exaggerating. No, you really not are at all. Car- carrying them in wheelbarrows. Not at and all. then these stores are just saying, "We'll take." I mean, or, or do people well, start you'd, doing? You'd scale it, so you knew what you'd know what what a million dollars weighed. For for argument's sake, so you'd you'd have a scale and you put the you put the block of money onto the scale, and that's how you'd know what the value of the money was. You wouldn't try and start counting out the notes. How? I mean, I'm trying to put myself in this place. It would seem so hopeless. I, I would imagine that that would absolutely hopeless. So at the at the end of it, the end of when the when the Zimbabwe dollar crashed at this quintillion to one scenario, you'd go into the into the supermarket. There would be no no food in the supermarkets. The shelves would be empty, absolutely empty. And and that's in true for you too. The the manager of hotel, absolutely. So you'd have to with a with a hotel because you're earning foreign currency from from people coming to stay. You then you then have some foreign currency in your foreign currency account. So you, you'd bring in you'd bring in essentials obviously with the foreign currency that you had that you had managed to get that government government had allowed that you're able to then buy, purchase various commodities for your for your customers for your guests and the people that didn't have that kind of access to foreign currency were they bartering a lot were they figuring out new ways of doing the so all, economy? You, all, you, all you could do because you, everyone everyone traded so what you would do is, is with with your zim dollars you'd buy us dollars so you'd, you'd pay a premium for them at the time knowing of course in a week or two weeks or whatever it would no longer be a premium so you'd hold on to your US dollars as much as you possibly could and then sell them on the black market so you could then you could then at least buy what you could buy or use use your US dollars to buy what you couldn't buy anywhere else. Um, so yeah, it, it just it just became a, a game, you know. But we, one one survives, one kind of gets gets through it and, and moves on to the next chapter. But um, so just a few weeks ago, I had on um, an investment portfolio manager, and we were talking about how much money the U.S. government has been printing. And uh, I wish I would have had this conversation in my back pocket because I can only imagine inflation on a theoretical level. Hmm. That's like what you're describing, and I've never even it never even crossed my mind. I mean, to be to be weighing things like a million. I mean, you're essentially saying it's the it's worth less than the paper. It's the, it's far less than the paper it's printed on. Wow. Hmm. And you hear about this happening in um, in Germany, you know, during right, the Second World War, right? Hmm. But I'd never heard about this. Well, it's con- in in comparison, Zimbabwe. That uh, the German scenario fades into insignificance. Oh, it's worse. Oh, far worse, far worse. In the in the German scenario, what 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 would happen in Zimbabwe? You'd you'd throw away the money and you'd keep the wheelbarrow. Huh. Get rid of the money because it's actually worthless. The yeah. wheelbar- the wheelbarrow's got some real worth. The money doesn't. So when they pegged it to the dollar, was that something that the U.S. was like, "Yeah, go ahead," or? or- when or did we, they actually just start using? They we, denominated we just started, everything. Started in using in dollars. So that's just like dollar. Panama. The, yeah. the country of Panama yeah. does that, or at least they did it when I was there. Mm. Yeah. So they, they then do it just adopted the U.S. dollar as the currency, which would then make U.S. dollars even more valuable than they would be in the United States, which would make it very difficult to get into that game. Yes. Yeah. But but everyone did because what what happened was there, there was people had been hoarding. So what happened was it just became exposed. So because the, before, were you not allowed to to no, use? You weren't allowed to have the U.S. dollars. How did you pay your taxes? What taxes? 
I don't think you know. It, it, I think it got to such such a stage, such a state where I, I'll give. In fact, I'll give you an example that might put the taxes into a bit of bit of perspective. Like all of us, or like mo- most of us, we're working people. You would buy a home and you'd pay for the home over over a twenty year period. Um, if you can if you can purchase it quicker than that, well, you're doing well. But most people will get to kind of their twenty years and ha- and have a home, or they'll borrow against their payments, so they'll have a second mortgage and they'll, they'll just carry on buying, which is which is the normal way. So you can imagine now, bef- before this hyperinflation started, I I would go to the bank and I would ask for a hundred thousand dollar loan to buy a house, okay, and I'd start off paying paying my mortgage, paying my bond, what what whatever the terminology is here. And I'd pay my three thousand dollars a month over the next twenty years, and so it would happen. Now you can imagine once this hyperinflation started, I still only owed the same amount of money. Right, as long as you didn't have a floating dollars. interest rate, That's you were right. good. <laughs> so what would happen is, is at the end of the day, I could pay my house off with one day's pay. Whoa! Because it was still only worth a hundred thousand. So all the people holding debt were screwed. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. The rest of the interview is on my page, or you can listen to the audio version at the Vance Crow Podcast.